A new chapter in the Bill Cosby controversy. Supermodel Beverly Johnson has just joined the long list of women coming forward with allegations against the comedian. The man once beloved as America's dad for his role on The Cosby Show, now reviled by many as the accusations just keep coming. Johnson describes what she says happened that night to ABC's Lindsay Davis in a television exclusive. Tonight, a fashion icon adds her voice to the chorus of women accusing Bill Cosby of drugging them. Beverly Johnson. The drug was very powerful. Much like Cosby, Johnson has long been viewed as a transformative figure in the black community. The first black model to grace the cover of American Vogue. And tonight, she's coming forward with damning allegations about what she says happened to her back in 1986. I get a call from my agency, modeling agency, uh, stating that um, Bill Cosby wants me to come in for a part on the show. I was invited down to the studio, and then Bill Cosby um, asked me to meet at his brownstone to go over the role. She says there was nothing out of the ordinary on the first visit. She says she was invited back a second time, and that Cosby said he wanted to rehearse the role of a pregnant woman she'd be playing on an upcoming episode of The Cosby Show. Part of the exercise he wanted me to do was to act like you were drunk. You know, the role was for a pregnant woman on the show, but I said, well, okay, and, and I went with that. She says while at his house, he insisted on making what he said would be the best cup of cappuccino. I took a couple of sips of the uh, cappuccino, and from the first sip and then the second sip, I knew I had been drugged. I mean, I was woozy, my speech was slurred. It kept getting stronger, you know, as time went on. I knew that I was in danger. Then Johnson claims Cosby started to touch her. He called me over as if to begin the scene, he placed um, his hands on my waist. The supermodel says she went into survival mode. I just called him every name I could possibly think of, some pretty strong names. He was getting angry, he was pissed, and um, he you know, grabbed me by my arm and dragged me down the, the brownstone stairs, and uh, a, a taxi stopped, and he threw me in the taxi. She says she recalls getting away. I feel very lucky that I wasn't raped. I, and I don't think I was raped, but I, I don't know how I got home. I don't know how I got upstairs. I would imagine it was my doorman that took me out of the taxi and got me upstairs. It was almost like a family member had betrayed me. It was such a huge sense of, of betrayal for me. Since last month, more than a dozen women have come forward claiming they were drugged, sexually assaulted, or raped by Cosby, in most cases, decades ago. Cosby's lawyers didn't respond to our calls today, but in the past have dismissed previous allegations saying that accusers are coming out of the woodwork with fabricated or unsubstantiated stories. Another one of Cosby's accusers is Joan Tarshish. She spoke to my colleague Cecilia Vega about what she says happened to her. She says it was 1969. She was 19, a comedy writer visiting Los Angeles when friends introduced her to Cosby, then starring in his first sitcom. He took a liking to me. and. Uh, I liked him too. He was really funny. He was really friendly. We made jokes with each other. And he said, well, come up to my cabin, uh, my cottage after I'm done working, and I'd like to work on this with you. And you thought? I thought, cool. She says he poured her a Bloody Mary and then topped it off with beer. She believes she was also drugged. The next thing I remember, I was on the couch and he was removing my underwear. That's what you remember about That's that? That's when I came to, and I was just... Oh, I was just horrified and still, still kind of out of it, but just disgusted and disappointed and shocked. Do you call the police? Do you tell a girlfriend? Do you tell your mother? Do you tell anyone? I tell no one. I tell no one because I had um, the victim's guilt of I should have known better. Like Joan and many of Cosby's other alleged victims, Beverly Johnson didn't report what she says happened to police. It's the norm to be silent. When I called a few girlfriends because I knew I was gonna come forward with this today and I told them what happened to me, 
they began to tell me about the sexual assault that happened to them by someone else. And I'm like horrified. I'm like, oh, why didn't you tell me? She said, I didn't want to tell you. And the reason I told you was because you told me about yours. And at that moment, I said, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to tell. Now that all the other allegations are coming to light, Johnson says she felt compelled to speak out. These women gave me the courage to come forward. Johnson says she was initially hesitant about coming forward as a black woman. Does it make it different for a black woman to come out accusing a black man? This was the most difficult decision that I've ever made, uh, particularly now with the Michael Brown and, and in the Eric Gardner's, this uh, attack on black men um, is, is real. And now I am, you know, calling out a black man, a revered uh, black man. And sometimes it's really hard to do the right thing. But this is the right thing to do. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. For more of their interview, make sure to watch GMA in the morning.